Today, I would like to talk about the power of design, the power of community labs, and the power, power of creativity to drive the change in, within government forward, to drive with agility, to drive with um, determination, and to create a positive impact out in government and out with the citizens of the world. Um, and the key theme that I will be mentioning back and back is how do we harness the human potential at scale? So, oops, the uh, clicker, yeah. So today I would like to start first by uh, mentioning three distinct examples. The first one is from Nesta. It is one of the pioneering institutions in UK that has single-handedly built the creative industry strategy for UK and beyond, has set role models for many other nations. And through their efforts, they were able to actually create a fund of more than 100 120 million pounds that has been shaping how creatives are both grown and attracted to the country and that has been one of the key differentiators for UK. Another example is Danish Design Center and what they have done is also tremendously impactful during times of COVID as a governmental organization that also functions as an NGO. They have actually designed more uh, design sprints to help traditional companies adapt to the reality of COVID using design sprints. And one inspiring example is Tucked, the sustainable furniture company that has figured out how to become more digitally enabled and how to become circular by recycling wood and other materials that they need through a digital platform they have built. Another example comes from Asia. The Singapore Ministry of Health has done these very extensive citizen engagement processes called Singapore Conversations, where they actually were able to listen to 47,000 Singaporeans at scale using digital means as well as physical gatherings, which led directly to policy developments in the areas of Pioneer Generation Package and MediShield Life. Now you might say, these are disparate examples from the world. What do they have in common? What they actually have in common is that they actually use the power of design, the power of communities to drive real change. Now, this might be deceiving to some of you because these words are sometimes used in the context of just arts and culture, of a certain group of people that are just ex executing and developing creativity for its own sake. What I'm arguing is that these skills and these methods are foundational to driving change within the government. What we hear in creative industries uh, within Atelier and within our circle is actually the ability to grow and attract the creatives that are there to drive change, to address these complex challenges. What we hear in design thinking, in design sprints, is for government officials to actually be able to work with these creatives effectively by framing the challenges the right way, by using the five-step method to actually iterate, prototype, test, and scale. And finally, the, mo the most important bit is the fact that you have some creatives that are actually driving to work on complex challenges. And the fact that you have government officials that have become more well-versed in working with these people is not sufficient. How do we tap to the potential of the masses? through community labs or through design labs, similar to what His Excellency Saeed Amullah just mentioned within the context of ADIO, it is precisely the community labs that actually bring people together and then tap into the wisdom of the masses. Now, I would like to share some examples from our past work within Atelier, an organization that we have been building over the last nine years, where we have also figured out how to use these methods to drive tangible change forward. So what you see here is our Atelier Dubai hub. It is both home to about 20, 25 team members from our team that are diverse strategists, designers, innovators, technologists, as well as a creative community of more than 100 people that are members of the same space. So the members are also operating in the same space with us co-creating solutions. And we're located right at Emirates Tower, so anyone that passes by, you're more than welcome, and we would love to host you. Within this, let's call, innovation lab that we have built, we have been also practicing 
the, the innovation around these three axes. One is the creative industries axis. And what we have found is that across Middle East, there are tremendously uh, talented individuals, be it freelancers or small companies, that have done a lot of small and large commercial work. But they realize that just doing commercial work is not going to solve the challenges of today and tomorrow. Talking about climate change, talking about the energy crisis, talking about the refugee crisis, these individuals are hungry to respond to these challenges. But there is no platform that brings them together. So what we did by doing uh, the Creative Power Map, this new platform that we built, was to map all these individuals curate them, understand their dream projects, and then have an interactive database that is actually out in the internet where e each of these individuals are visible. But the real value add isn't in the individuals. It is in the ability to bring them together in the same room to drive change. For that, we have started in response to the COP28 agenda that will become paramount in UAE and beyond. We have started hosting these roundtables with creatives where we best then are positioned to understand what are their dream projects, what are their aspirations, and how can we drive the change forward. So this is not all the citizens, this is not the government officials, but these are individuals that are actually very well equipped to respond to complex challenges and solving them from different lenses. In this picture, you will see, you're seeing some strategists, some architects, product designers, service designers, business analysts, engineers, it doesn't matter what the background is, they're all geared to respond to climate crisis that, that we are in. Another lens that we have been carrying it is equipping the government officials with the right capabilities and skills of design thinking. This is basically the Design Golf project that we have launched in, back in 2019 with His Excellency Mohammed Al Gargawi also hosting and Palmwood as a design partner. Jointly, we have worked with 35 government officials across Dubai to embed them with the right skill sets and mindsets so that they can actually work in these complex challenge-solving processes. And we started in a very high and aspirational place because the question matters more than the answer. What national challenges should Design Golf tackle? And based on this, some initiatives have come about including the very early seeds of what you have just listened in the keynote speech of Umal Quain's new strategy, the blue economy. Those ideas have been seeded in these rooms about two, three years ago. And we're now in the second cohort, and we're also working with other government entities to basically drive this shared understanding about the potential and the power of design thinking. Another example of the recent work that we have been doing with the graduates of this program is mapping and understanding the food system in Dubai so that we reduce food waste because it is a complex and interconnected challenge that will require the interdisciplinary approach to be taken. So hopefully this gives you a sense of how the creatives and the government together can drive change. The third bit, the most important bit, we believe, is the one on community labs. Because it is when all these people come together to drive a shared agenda forward. And in this one, in this case, the example is from Turkey. Image is the first social innovation platform that we were actually uh, building back from 2015 onwards. We're in the seventh year. And from the positioning of the whole effort to the learning agenda, to the brand, the web presence, and the organizational design, we have been basically building this new institution that is now running with its own funds, with its own team, and with its own agenda. There are probably many other examples that can be appropriated to the local context, but what we have been focusing on with Image is starting from crowdfunding and empowering the new grads to move to the domain of social innovation space, to take on the urban mobility challenge with certain sponsors and partners, or even responding to the COVID crisis by doing a hackathon two weeks after it started. This, the, the first hackathon we organized was in March 2020. So the type of agility that these labs bring just create tremendous leverage to think through these challenges fast without necessarily a lot of bureaucracy involved. Now, what does this all mean for all of us? 
These are three methods that are quite powerful, but they only are relevant today because the past methods where we talk about best practices, where we talk about what, what has been done elsewhere in the world don't necessarily work. By appropriating it to the local government officials, to the local creatives and to the local citizens, that's the only way, actually, we believe, to drive lasting change forward. Um, so th it is basically this trio, to reiterate, of creative industries, design thinking, and community labs. Now you might say, that all sounds great, but it's also a little overwhelming. Where do I start? The simple place to start is to start in your uh, domain of influence. You may not have control over maybe the nation's creativity agenda. Maybe your background is completely dissimilar to it. That's okay. But basically figuring out where you sit in the policy landscape to influence the people around you about the importance of creative industry strategy is definitely the first thing. And there it is too different pillars that are sitting side by side. How do you attract in this world post-COVID where talent wants to go wherever it's most convenient? And how do you grow, which is the long-term strategy of how do you grow these individuals so that you're actually building more and more internal capacity within your city or nation? There are some tactical interventions that we have seen work really well, and we're working closely with Go Dubai and the UAE government to institute some of these as we're partners with Dubai Future Foundation here on the ground, but it starts actually pretty simple. It starts with becoming extremely agile and allowing these people to move in to the country at ease. Spreading out the golden visas, which UAE is already doing, is one of it, but probably there's a lot more that can be done. Creative clusters like Dubai Design District, like the project in Misa about building the creative district are definitely great moves in this direction, but how fast they come to life and how vibrant they stay is definitely the real challenge. Another bit is investing further in inst educational institutions and most importantly, the nas nation and city scale urban programming around creative industries so that the people out on the street also realize how important this is. The second one is the design keep ca thinking capability within your government, which will basically mean equipping the key individuals that are proactive, that are curious, within your cohort so that they become the train the trainer, they become the trainers that train others. The point isn't to educate 200, 500, 1,000 people at once. The point is to find the most effective 25 or 50 that internalize this and they become agents of change within your organization. And finally, with community labs, this is probably tethered to what you're already very much worried about, what you care about, that may be the smart cities, that may be food systems, that may be the refugee crisis, basically building the public-facing institution that sits at the threshold between government, private sector, and citizens, that's where the real leverage lies. So basically, by combining the, the, stra the strategy of these three legs, we believe that you can not only better address the issues that arise with COVID or with the re recent uh, crisis uh, about refugees in Ukraine, but any other crisis that is about to emerge. This is not an easy journey. What I'm describing cannot be done overnight. It probably requires a lot of determination. But what is extremely clear from the examples around the world, as well as what we have been doing over the last decade, is that it really pays off simply because not enough people, not enough institutions are doing it yet. And what is really the point of building governmental institutions, building these institutions that are at service if we're not building for the next seven generations ahead? Thank you very much. It was a pleasure being here.